हेलो आई एम डॉक्टर वीरेंद्र गैसास रायनोप्लास्टी सर्जन फ्रॉम पुणे हियर टू डेमोस्ट्रेट यू अ कैडेवरिक डिसेक्शन डन एट एनाटॉमी डिसेक्शन हॉल एम आई एम यर मेडिकल कॉलेज आई एम रियली थैंकफुल टू द एंटायर टीम ऑफ मायमर मेडिकल कॉलेज तलेगाव फॉर फॉर अरेंजिंग दिस अ ग्रेट कैडावर सो इंडियन नोजेस आर डिवाइडेड इन टू फाइव पार्ट्स एज अवर कंट्री इज नॉर्थ इंडियन वेर वी हैव अ कॉकेशियन नोजेस नॉर्थ ईस्ट वेर यू वी हैव अ मंगोलियड टाइप ऑफ नोजेस एंड द रेस्ट ऑफ इंडिया लाइक मिड पार्ट एंड द वेस्ट जोन हैज गॉट अ मीजो क्राइन एंड साउथ वी हैव द्रविडियन नोजेस बट इन जनरल द मैक्सिमम इज द नॉन कॉकेशियन नोजेस लाइक अनलाइक लाइक लाइक अ यूरोप यूरोपियन नोजेस so we have little shorter nasal bones with little weaker alar cartilage as compared to the caucasian noses so coming to the skin skin is little thick in south and in north it's little thin even the north is skin it's thin so if you consider this as a surface marking first you have to talk about the nasal height which is Uh, described as a length from the nasivion till the nasal to the nasal bone that's a base then we have the height of the nose which is also important uh, if especially in the ethnic rhinoplasty noses and the length uh, which is measured between two soft uh, tissue of the nasivion and pronasal so coming to the uh, so basically these uh, variations you should keep in a mind when you are operating when you are operating the noses according to the ethnicity and what exactly uh, patients demands are and how is that ethnicity is all about so nasivion that's a You you have to palpate the K area. That's a junction of bony and the cartilaginous junction, which is a very important. So here you can see the nasal bones are short, and the cartilaginous part of the nose is little long. The K junction is really important. Uh, you can feel it later after dissection. We can demonstrate it. You have to preserve all this landmarks in your live surgery and also during the dissection too. then that's a base of the nose uh that's a surface marking for the medial crura the foot plate the medial crust then the intermediate crust which forms a dome when combined with the other intermediate cartilage and then the lateral ala so now the lateral crust is not parallel to the nares the lateral crura is directed towards the lateral canthus so you will have lot of soft tissue which is form uh, which is filled with aponeurosis and few sesamoid cartilages which are lateral to the lateral knee la- lateral crust so that's a midline that's upper lateral cartilage marking then we have this is a intermediate uh, dome and which also forms a soft triangle which i will be describing it later so the lateral crust uh, and this is the piriform aperture so by in between the piriform aperture and lateral crust we have a soft tissue uh, as i told this has got a non specific sesamoid cartilages uh, sometimes you do get a collapse there so so that's a nasal process of uh, coming to the upper one third of the nose so that's a nasal process of frontal bone and the nasal process of maxilla and the nasal bones coming to the um, that's a columellar part which that's a shortest part of the columella uh, where you have to mark it and on top of it you have to take in open septo rhinoplasty a columellar incision so columellar incision is at the narrowest portion of the columella remember it's not at the mid part it's at the narrowest portion of the columella generally uh, preferred incision is inverted v incision 
previously many surgeons have taken step ladder incision or exact horizontal or a vertical incision too but that gives lot of fibrosis uh, with a scar tissue which is cosmetically not great then we have uh, many incisions uh, in a closed rhinoplasty we have intracartilages uh, this is a sub uh, no this is infracartilages incision it is not exactly the rim incision so mind so rim incision is different than the infracartilages incision so what i am marking is uh, infracartilages incision this is little away on the lateral slide as the la- lateral crust goes away pointing towards the lateral canthus so there is lot of tissue here the importance is in this pocket later on we can fill or uh, we can place a rim graft so then this is a 3 m mm incision uh, which is 3 mm inside the rim as this lower lateral cartilage the medial crura is very close to the rim medially then uh, you so you can see the lower border of upper lateral cartilage where you can take a incision for close rhinoplasty approach you can combine this with transfixation or a septoplasty uh, frayer incision and you can easily do a close rhinoplasty in by this approach before taking a incision you should be aware of a soft triangle which is the area bounded by the medial crura medially and the lateral crura with dome this triangle has got no cartilage there it's a very soft tissue so any incision taken will give you notching and a scar formation which is very difficult to treat so you should avoid a uh, incision there so the incision has to be 3 mm inside away from this soft triangle in so this is a cadaveric dissection i will show you about the infiltration because in rhinoplasty it is very important to give a a good surgical field it's the very important to give a painless period post op period to the patient and also it helps in elevating the planes so i use a rope vacuum 0.2% with 10 drops of adrenaline in 20 cc i infiltrate at the incision sites at the infracartilages columellar incisions then i will elevate the skin i will elevate the dorsal skin also and uh, for a better elevation then at the osteotomy sites then at the septum and i also i will give infra orbital and infra trochlear blocks to give a good post operative pain free period to the patients So there are different incisions in rhinoplasty one is infracartilages that's an incision which avoids the injury to the inferior border of lower lateral cartilage then will be combined with the rim incision medially which is 3 mm as i told 3 mm behind the rim to avoid the injury to the soft triangle and 3 mm at the medial part at the columellar part it is very important to avoid a injury to the lower lateral cartilage in case you do a injury you should know 
how to suture it precisely either with 50 or 60 pds there are two ways of uh, dissecting this skin envelope either you take a incision so you come from lateral to medial yeah you take a incision infra cartilages and the marginal incisions you dissect the skin envelope from this cartilage to avoid a injury and then you take a mid columnar not mid columnar then you take a columnar incision this is one way the other way is you take a columnar incision along with the infra cartilages incision and then elevate the skin i feel coming lateral to medial like dissecting the skin envelope and coming there it becomes much more easier safer to avoid injury to the lower lateral cartilage so uh, you can see the dome of the lower lateral cartilage of the right side and the left side too you can deliver it without taking a infra intercartilages incision in when the skin is loose but it's advisable to take a incision at the lower border of upper lateral cartilage so that the scroll area becomes free and you can deliver this lower lateral cartilage in close rhinoplasty approach so this dissection has to be really sharp with a sharp scissor because blunt scissors will give a more injury to this scroll area and can give rise to the inverted v deformity later on if this cartilage upper lateral cartilage is injured so like this you can deliver the lower lateral cartilage on both the sides you see the deformities and variation anatomical variation of lower lateral cartilage just like the open rhinoplasty approach and then you can treat either do a cephalic trimming or you can do a underfold by trimming the cephalic portion of the lower lateral cartilages Uh, a columnar incision is a inverted V incision taken at the narrowest portion of the columella. Inverted V, what happens is when there is a fibrosis, this inverted V lengthens and the scar becomes really faint, which is otherwise the straight line incisions is seen with the human eye, and the scar which is broken, it's not easily seen with the human eye. so that's a principle of taking the inverted v incision it's much more preferred than a uh, step ladder incision or a straight incision so the skin elevation becomes easy from the cartilage skeleton as we have already dissected the skin envelope from the cartilage any injury to the lower lateral crust the commonest injury is at the medial crura where many juniors will do it so you should suture it with as i told with a 50 or 60 pds then the dissection of the skin envelope from lower one third then the skin envelope dissection from the mid part so that's a sparse area sparse area which is you have to be below that to avoid a bleeding and injury to the nerves that to the nasal nerves so with a forceps try to catch this at just supra tip area and you will find a pocket with a sharp scissor you just cut it and with a sharp scissor you can go just below this layer you should dissect it till nasivion in saddle nose if the saddle nose is of grade 3 
you will have the tight skin and you should dissect this skin not only just at the level of the medial canthus but sometimes you should dissect this skin little more than superior to the mesivion and sometimes laterally till almost till the medial canthus the aim is to make this dorsal skin so, uh, loose so the pocket is with less tension so the graft which we keep which is with a less pressure this the other way happens if there is uh, a reduction rhinoplasty and if you or deviated nose where you are putting a free dice cartilage and if you dissect it too much laterally then the chances that our free dice cartilage can move on the on the lateral pockets so you have to carefully di- dissect this skin according to the deformity also in deviated noses you should dissect this skin laterally because many times these nasal bones are unequal in the sense one is concave and one is convex so you have to drill the nasal bone sometimes or sometimes you have to do a intermediate osteotomy to take care of that unequal nasal bones so after dissection also you should take a incision at the periosteum of the nasal bones there are two ways either you can take a vertical incision if the nasal bones are small or the horizontal incision which is preferred in hump noses so this is to avoid the injury to the cajun caria and then you elevate this muco uh, you elevate this periosteum so that whatever the cartilage you are going to put it it has to touch the nasal bones directly if you are drilling the nasal bone or the rasping the hump then your rasp is directly in contact with the nasal bones than the soft tissue or periosteum so lower lateral cartilage the lateral crust many times cutting this soft tissue is required especially in bulbous noses but if the lateral crura is weak so in that case you don't cut this perichondrium because sometimes removing this perichondrium will make that lower lateral cartilage more weak so you can see this lateral crura ends much below at the halfway of our lobule and there is a lot of aponeurosis and a sesamoid cartilage there so this is important in if you want to strengthen this uh, graft strengthen this lateral, lateral crura then this pocket is really important that's a vestibular skin below which is very tight uh, tightly attached and you should dissect it uh, very carefully in cases where you have to relocate the lateral crust or where you have to strengthen the lateral crura with cartilages so that's a dissection towards the midline towards the septum so that's a interdomal ligament called as ligament of pitambe often this is respected in close uh, many of the rhinoplasties but if the deformity is more and if you want to have the full open structure rhinoplasty then you have to cut it and later on you should suture it in an anatomical way so now you can after cutting it you can clearly see the shadow of the caudal part of the septum here down you will also encounter a depressor septa uh, muscle too so the dissection here becomes little difficult because of lot of attachment of depressor septa muscle and lot of soft tissue at the lower border at the caudal border of the septum at anterior superior septal angle the soft tissue is less and it becomes little easy to dissect it but you have to be really careful to avoid a injury to the anterior septal angle as anterior septal angle is really important and little any injury at the anterior septal angle or little on top or above it superior to it 
can give rise to a supra tip notching as well so here you can see a perichondrium where all the nutrition and the blood vessels are so it's very important to have a sub perichondrial plane to preserve this perichondrium to avoid a septal perforation later on while elevating this either you can cut that perichondrium either with a knife 15 number blade and then you can find a plane or you can do it with a sharp edge of a scissor just cut a perichondrium without cutting the cartilage and then you can get a good sub perichondrial plane you can see again a slightly a uh, anterior maxillary crest or the spine there too and where the cartilage is sitting on the spine during life surgery ask the assistant to hold the septum to keep that septum straight and with a scissor just dissect it and go into sub perichondrial plane and later on you shift the suction to the suction elevator so that it becomes very easy to do a sub perichondrial dissection to expose bony cartil bony cartilaginous part of the septum also you have to dissect the upper lateral cartilage attachment from the septum especially in deviated noses is important to dissect from the nasal septum and uh, the upper lateral cartilage to have a better exposure and for a better uh, graft placement of spreader grafts after attach detachment of the upper lateral cartilage from the septum generally you put a endoscope in a sub perichondrial plane to either harvest the septal cartilage or to correct the deviation in a deviated noses so you can see a bony uh, cartilage junction you can see the perpendicular plate of ethmoid the vomer and the septal cartilage during septoplasty you have to break the bony cartilage junction keeping 1 cm uh, superior part intact so that's a spur spur is the bony cartilage yes yeah that's a spur so uh, spur is the sharp bone which is created at the junction of bony and cartilage junction so the key is to not to give a pressure to the mucosa otherwise you will get a tear in the mucosa the key is press towards medially press towards the bone 
press the bone and the cartilages medially to avoid a tear like this so even then there is a small tear you can uh, neglect it or you can suture it later on according to the size of the tear if the tear is on the both the sides then you are definitely have to suture it to avoid a septal perforation so that's a bony cartilage junction so keep one centimeter attachment of the bony cartilages on superiorly and inferiorly you detach it and if there is a bony septal deviation then you cut it with a double edge scissor and then with the lux you can remove this bony piece septoplasty is the surgery to correct the deviated part of the septum the commonest is removal is the inferior strip and correcting uh, the septal deviation along with a small removal of the bony deviation smr is the surgery where we keep l shaped structure 1 cm uh, intact and we remove the entire part of the bony and cartilages especially in rhinoplasty when you want to harvest a lot of septal cartilage then you keep this 1 cm so you often you do smr than a septoplasty so that you can harvest a large chunk of uh, septal cartilage for grafting purposes important structure during septoplasty is anterior nasal spine it is very important to see the the anterior nasal spine in each and every case of deviated noses in cleft noses too especially a uh, patients with a caudal dislocation the spine is deviated and the deviated noses the spine is deviated on the same side of the deviation in caudal dislocation and the septum is more lateralized to that deviated part of the spine many cases you have to either the drill the spine or you have to fracture the spine and bring it in center keeping one part of the peri ostium intact treating caudal dislocation is very important so main treating is the treating with a swing door technique where you should relocate the deviated part of the caudal septum to the opposite side drill the spine and suture it
osteotomy. Osteotomy is really important step in rhinoplasty. So there are intermediate osteotomies, paramedian osteotomies, transfer osteotomies and lateral osteotomies. Inter- intermediate osteotomy is the leastly done osteotomy. So we'll focus on mainly a paramedian osteotomy which is done just lateral to the septum then the tra- lateral osteotomy which is in the groove nasofacial groove from the medial canthus till the piriform aperture sometimes you leave small bony fragment there to avoid a collapse of the inferior turbinate then we have a transverse osteotomy which is at the level of medial canthus avoiding a injury to the medial canthus till the dorsum so paramedian osteotomy is done mainly by 5 mm osteotome either with a osteotome lindenman burr or with a piezo uh, whichever instrument is available but then it has to be a sharp and quick too otherwise there are chances that you will have a free floating bones so the straight part of the 5 mm osteotome is toward the septum it starts with the k junction in between the septum and the upper lateral cartilage it's a straight line fracture goes till the level of medial canthus then the lateral osteotomy lateral to- osteotomy is done either by two ways lateral osteotomy is done to fracture the nasal process of maxilla from the nasal nasal process of maxilla from the nasal bones it is done at the level at the exactly at the nasofacial groove so if you don't respect this nasofacial groove and if you are little medial then you will give a step deformity later on so take a 3 mm osteotome ideally 2 mm osteotome but practically 2 mm osteotome breaks immediately after few cases so you should go for a 3 mm osteotome take a two small stab incisions at the midpoint of the medial canthus and lobule little 2 or 3 mm above the midline in where the nasal length is more or if you are operating in the mid portion of the india then you should take at the le- exactly at the mid point of these two points then another stab incision at the mid point of the medial canthus and the dorsum for the transverse osteotomy take 3 mm osteotome with the sharp edge of the 3 mm osteotome you cut the periosteum so that the bleeding is less the angular vein drops in and the injury to the angular vein is less you start low to low osteotomy uh, which is a continuous not like a stamp one it's a continuous osteotomy till the level of the medial canthus and then complete these fractures with transverse osteotomy you can also do this with low to high osteotomy and then later on you can fracture it blindly with a pressure of the thumb and complete osteotomy to mobilize all the nasal bones or the nasal process of maxilla and the nasal process of frontal bone the osteotomy is really required is important in deviated noses is important in uh, to avoid the open roof deformity in the hump noses and in saddle noses if it is broad to make the nose narrow the osteotomy has got a major role there
सो सेप्टल कार्टिलेज इज अ नाइस कार्टिलेज टू कार्व डिफरेंट ग्राफ्ट सो इन दिस केस वी विल शो यू डेमोन्स्ट्रेशन ऑफ अ कॉलिमुलर स्ट्रट देन स्प्रेडर ग्राफ्ट रिम ग्राफ्ट एंड डॉर्सल ऑन ले ग्राफ्ट तो सर्जरी ऑफ देन कम्स द सर्जरी ऑफ द मिडिल वन थर्ड ऑफ द नोज दैट मेनली फोकसेस ऑन द स्टेबिलिटी ऑफ द के जंक्शन सो हियर कम्स द स्प्रेड ग्राफ्ट और स्प्रेड फ्लैप्स इन हम्प नोज आफ्टर रिडक्शन ऑफ द सेप्टल पार्ट ऑफ द हम्प इफ द लैटरल कार्टिलेजेस आर फोर मिलीमीटर्स इन हाइट मोर हाइट दैन द सेप्टम देन यू कैन टर्न इट टू फॉर्म अ स्प्रेड ग्राफ्ट इफ स्प्रेड फ्लैप्स इफ नॉट देन यू हैव टू यूज अ स्प्रेड ग्राफ्ट सो स्प्रेड ग्राफ्ट एज गॉट मेनी रोल्स इट फर्स्ट स्टेबिलाईज इज द नेजर डॉर्सम इट गिव्स अ गुड एस्थेटिक डॉर्सल लाइन्स इट ओपन्स अप द नेजल वॉल्व एरिया एंड इट अवॉइड्स इन्वर्टेड वी डिफॉर्मिटी सो दीज आर द अराउंड I'll say two or three millimeters in breadth. These are the grafts. In length, it will start just below the nasal bones till the anterior superior septal angle. If these grafts they are more uh, more in length than anterior septal angle, then these are ex- called as extended spreader grafts. Then in that case, it has got a mo- another function of lengthening of nose. then you suture it at the two sides with a 50 pds to have a better stability surgery of lower one third here is the main principle is stability of the tip stability of the tip is mainly done by either with a columnar strut or especially if it is a revision case then the preferred graft is septal extension graft so columnar strut is a small graft which is around 2 mm uh, thin which lies exactly on the bone till just below the dome you fix it with the needles and then you suture it with 50 pds so after suturing of the columnar strut then you have to suture the dome suturing of the dome suturing of domes suturing of dome is done by either intradomal suturing interdomal suturing either you can do it separately or you can combine one suture so basically you start medially then comes laterally and then comes again medially so that the knot is always hidden under the skin 
or in between the cartilage so you come from medial to lateral then lateral to medial you cross on the opposite side and then come back so the knot is in between so this will create a dome so this dome creation sutures are interdomal sutures and intradomal sutures now this is uh, important key area is you should not make this knots very tight otherwise it will give a pinched appearance in indian scenario we generally rely on a grafts rather than sutures as far as the tip surgery is concerned so either you put a shield graft if the columnar show is less or a dorsal only graft like this if there is already a good columnar show for giving a tip a sharper tip as the indian skin is thick we don't prefer a two small grafts for two uh, shining points so generally we keep one grafts to have a, a one shining point because our skin is brown and thick so this is a dorsal only graft which is uh, kept at tip defining point which is sutured to the dome of the intermediate uh, cartilage so you fix this cartilage grafts only grafts to the dome area with 50 pds so either uh, dorsal only graft or shield graft then comes little on the lateral side you put a rim grafts which is at exactly at the pocket which is one or maximum 2 mm thick which extends till the lateral lobule till at the level of our dorsal only grafts either the medial end is floating or you fix this uh, medial sir a medial part of the rim graft to the dorsal only grafts if the skin is thick then it's better to fix this uh, rim uh, cartilage uh, rim grafts as this uh, skin tension skin can pull this rim grafts suturing is really important to avoid a uh, scarring and the scarred columella or post op scar scarring and a bad scar is not a problem of the technique but it's a problem of a surgeon surgeon if surgeon has not carefully sutured it with 50 or 60 uh, sutures then definitely patient in post op will have a scar formation so it's really important to suture it uh, gently to avoid a notching and to avoid a scar tissue in post operative phase alar base deformity now alar flare is a common feature that contribute to the width of the lower one third of the nose it's more seen in south indian uh, population it's very difficult to correct symmetrical on both the sides so either you can stage this surgery or you can do it in the same setting according to the severity of the disease so there are few uh, thing one is the wedge Uh, resection so wedge excision reduces the nasal flaring by removing the wedges of ala or the fleshy curved lower part of the ala that attaches to the cheek this 
uh, you can do it with keeping uh, respecting the crease there if you remove it then there will be a horrible notching at the uh, ala and uh, this you can see the artificial look of the nose then the sill excision is commonly used to narrow the base of the ala where it attaches to the cheek which helps to reduce the nostril width without hampering the notch natural curve notch at the ala then uh, hockey stick excision where it's a combination of wedge and the seal so according to the flaring of the ala and uh, seal uh, lengthening you should choose which part uh, of the excision has to be done